Hello everybody and welcome to Wednesday evening Nail Talk Live, the international e-workshop for all you nail lovers throughout the world. Tonight we have a special edition because it's the second class, the second part of Jessica Patberg, the Dutch queen of nail art, her masterclass or bootcamp. And today it's about blending, shading, shadowing and highlighting or doing a lot with colors to give your designs more life, dimension and volume. I also have the winners of the challenge of two weeks ago, and that was Deborah's challenge. And we have a great prize for these winners, but that will come a little bit later in the show. For now, I'm going to say, as usual, let's get started. And of course, two weeks ago, or three weeks ago, Jessica was here for the very first part of Jessica's bootcamp. And that was about fine lines and detailing, detailed lines and work. And my first question for Jessica is, how was the homework? How did everybody do? Oh, it was so much fun. Hi, everyone. So nice that you are joining tonight. It was so much fun, Pepijn. Uh, it was a blast just to see all of those designs. And uh, some of them uh, made a little bit um, like their own signature uh, to the homework. So I was really, really extremely proud of all of the, um, yeah, the submissions. Of course, I presume we had a lot of Dutch viewers and their homework. But did we also have a lot of international viewers? Yes, we did. Also, a lot of Dutch, as you say, but also a lot of um, yeah, foreign countries. Beautiful, beautiful work. And I was extremely proud and um, yeah, was really happy that I could help um, some of the persons uh, just to give them little tips and tricks extra, uh, some feedback uh, which they can um, well keep in their mind for the next time um, while creating fine lines. Um, as today, we are doing it again, of course. Yeah, you're going to repeat the fine lines and the detailing, but the main focus is going to be blending. What is blending? Yeah, yeah, exactly. The fine lines, of course, they are really, really um, substantial to every design, but uh, the blending as well. And I mean like a color overflow, like from dark, from light to dark, uh, shading, like you can do with one color, like a darker color, but you can also play like in a range of colors, but I will show you later today, of course. And some uh, designs of the first part uh, are coming back to well, make it a little bit more interesting. Yeah, because you already promised us that the rose will be a part of every bootcamp class and you're going to extend on that. So blending is nothing more than going from one color to the other color. Yes, exactly. That is correct. Um, so I have uh, prepared one design, which um, in, I'm going to play with different kinds of uh, variations of colors, uh, going from light towards really dark and even black. And the other one is just shading, well just, it's not just, but shading with one color, and that is a dark color, just black. And with that black, you can make black, dark gray, light gray to gray. Okay, so that's interesting. I'm all also having a look at all the comments. Syriza is there and saying, hello everybody, good luck. She wishes us to us all. Um, of course, our friends are here as well. Magda says that it sounds amazing. Bianca Freigang is there from uh, Germany. Chrisje from uh, Limburg, almost as far away as Germany. <laughs> Maria Pop from Romania, hello Jessica. Um, Gemma is really in a, in a little bit sad because she didn't have the time to complete her homework for the first part of the bootcamp. So, uh, but I know, Gemma, you did it last year. Yeah. So, and you really improved a lot. So it was really worthwhile. Of course, uh, Magnetic Yerevan is here. Armine Laura uh, Laurence is here. So we have an international group. Fonica Simona is here. And she's also coming to Holland at the end of October to give a class in the Slim Nail. Um, Millie from Denmark, Henriette of course from Denmark, 
um, a lot of people, I, Monica Persson from uh, Sweden, and I also saw Emela. So welcome to all of you. It's so nice that you're joining us from all of those countries. And I think, Jessica, I have a tendency to speak too much, no. but I'll give, give the floor to you. <laughs> no, that is a first. <laughs> of course not, because it's really important, all the things that you are telling us and the viewers, of course. So, okay, let's get started. For the first design, I have um, well, worked a little bit up front. So, uh, for the first part of my e-workshop was the fine lines, and I started my fine lines making a sketch with a pencil. That is the same start of this design. I'm going to make a fall design, a little fox, a little cute little fox. So let's start on our buffed surface with our pencil. This is uh, the beautiful color uh, say cheese. Ah, and from the selfish in Holland. Yeah, I yeah. love this color. It's nice and bright, but light enough to make all of the colors that I'm going to add over this stay the colors. If it were a little bit darker, I would make first my sketch all um, fill in with white and then go over with the colors. But that's another story. Um, so this is two layers of um, the beautiful say cheese. Uh, I removed the sticky layer and I buffed it with a white block. And now we are going to make a sketch of the little fox with my pencil. Okay, let's start. I'm going to start with the heads. And probably you have seen it already uh, from the post. Um, to say that I was going live tonight. This is the same fox. Irma is asking how much time she has before the house homework closes. The homework, the homework closes. Well, Irma, you always have two weeks. That means until 11 o'clock in the morning, two weeks from today. So you have a two week uh, time frame to do your homework. Yeah, so it's, it's a lot of time. You can really go into the homework. So this is like a swirl, but it's going to be the tail of the little fox. I'm all, um, already creating. Yeah, Gillian says to me that it looks like a guillotine. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. off with their heads. <laughs> that is a cool nail art design too. <laughs> theme, I love that. Maybe it's now looking a little less like a guillotine, Gillian. So these are the head, uh, the ears <laughs> on top of oh this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> As we did in the first part, of course, of course, I want to show you, but I can tell you because you know that the fine lines that I made on the first part over this sketch, uh, the pencil drawings with liner gel black. And uh, that liner gel was cured and I removed the pencil stripes that I've made from my surface. You remember? Yeah. Okay. So then we have, because I already prepared at home, the outlines already. Of course, this is not really how I am working, uh, making a design um, uh, nowadays. I never do the outlines with black first and then color in. I always color in my sketch and then later I am adding the fine lines on top of that. But because we are challenging uh, ourselves and we are learning, that's why I've chosen now to create these lines already. I'm filling over the lines, but because they are black, you still see the parts where the shape of the head is, um, where the part of the legs are, so that's why. Okay, I have some viewers that are a little bit complaining, or complaining is perhaps not the correct word, but they don't see the fox yet. So perhaps you can <laughs> show quickly the example of the finished product. Yeah, this is a donut story, yeah, Pepijn? Yes, I know, I know, <laughs> I've been there. Okay, I will show you, I will show you. This is the fox that we are going to make. Super cute. Now you see it? <laughs> yeah, it's clear, <laughs> yes. Okay, I get that a lot, sorry. <laughs> and normally in my salon, I even don't work like this. I'm working from colors, uh, making all of the shapes, and then later adding those outlines. So for my customers, my clients never know <laughs> what they're, and they just see like, like, what is this? Like bulbs of color, and that's it. But I see a fox or a flower or whatever in it. I do would like to ask you, because what uh, strikes me is that you don't actually draw everything 
in no. the face of the fox. For instance, where the little throat is, or the, or the chest and the face, there is a line in between that in the finished result, but it's not there in the drawing. So how do you choose which parts do you define and which parts don't you define? That is a good question, and I do that, but I don't think about it, why I do that. Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, I do that because I can play. It is artwork, it is handwork, so never my head is going to be the same as, um, as, as the uh, first head or the, um, the second head I'm going to make. Um, so in this case, my head is now like the outline, but the little tongue and the little mouth I can play with the size and the, um, well, the parts where it's going to be. Maybe my head is a little bit bigger now, so I can add a little bit bigger tongue, for instance. If it's smaller, I can play with those colors to make it smaller and more fitting um, with this shape head, so that's why. So you harmonize the smaller elements by feeling and by experience, of course, and you just have to trust the process, as Magda mentions in the comments. Yeah. Okay, well, uh, that's clear. Okay, well, let's color in. I have taken already some drops of colors on my palettes, and I will tell you what everything is. So this is a mixture of uh, Lina Gel White uh, with Cerisa Sweeties, because it's a little bit more fluid, but less fluid than Whitest White Gel Polish, for instance. Of course, you can use Whitest White, that's no problem. Um, this is the beautiful color, Eva. Yeah, Eva Apricot. I love this one. It's a beautiful fox color. This color is one of the cream collections, the Pink Cream Gel Polish. Lina Gel Black, Lina Gel White. And these are the colors I'm going to make my shadings with. From glass polishes, yellow, orange, um, this is the brown, and of course, here it comes, um, burgundy. Ah, burgundy! <laughs> I never can pronounce it normal. Um, and this is of course not orange, it is orange, but it's called amber glass polish. Of course, maybe you don't have glass polishes in your assortment, at home, in your salon. You can add a little bit of basin top or a clear top gel uh, to all your gel polish, mix that a little bit, and then you have a transparent color to work with. So. For instance, the new color Amber Embrace from the Is It Love or Desire collection yeah. with some transparent basin top. This is a tip of Gillian. Oh. And then you have a perfect orange tone as well. What I wanted to mention, Jessica, of yeah. course, we are working behind the scenes on your Jessica's mix. The mix of liner gel white and Cerisa Sweeties white and black will come available to all of you in a special edition, limited edition, Jessica's mix. No. Yes, in about one and a half to two months. That is so amazing. Wow. The perfect Christmas gift. Oh, yeah, but really, you will love it. Because it's so, so nice to work with that mixture. Already, um, I'm working with it all the time. Uh, the white and the black, I love it. And it's a perfect mixture. It's nice fluid, but it's still like you have the control over your lines. So, yeah, you need to have that. It's a must-have. Okay, let's start. Put on some glasses to see what I'm doing. I'm first going to start with that beautiful Eva Apricot gel polish. Of course, really important not to work too thick. And as I said, I'm going over my lines. And it's just one layer. And because it's a light background, you can um, leave it at one layer because I'm going to add extra color over with uh, glass polishes, of course. I am now using this uh, beautiful Ava, um, Eva Eprico, but you can work with all kinds of orange colors, gel polishes. I'm going to go further with the body. I'm working now with Jessica's Choice. Maybe you think it, this works um, not really right for me. I need a bigger brush. Of course, you can use uh, Sil's Choice, Sylvana's Choice, or the Detailer 3. And sometimes I work with the Detailer 3, sometimes I work with this one. 
people are very happy that your Jessica's mixes are coming. Uh, yay! It's a perfect gift from Magnetic and of course from Jessica, Cornelia says. <laughs> yeah, and I'm also very happy because we had to find the balance and make it perfect. And that took a little bit of time. Okay. But we're working on more Jessica's Choice products coming in the future. Oh, so yeah. So just keep an eye on Magnetic Nail Design, Nail Talk Live, and Jessica, of course. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, those are amazing. But it's a secret. So let's go on. Of course, when you have everything in place, you can cure. Uh, 30 seconds. Yeah, because you don't cure in between, but if you're very um, afraid that you may smudge it, that's possible. Yeah, that is possible, but then I would recommend to do parts, like first the tail, then yeah. the body, and then the ears. Because otherwise you will see the difference in height. Because ah, you are so you want to make it even with, yeah. the, with the orange application. Yeah, that is really important to make it even, so that's why I work thin. Um, I'm going to work on. I'm first filling my brush and I'm painting. Yeah, I also have another question from Gillian. He's on the go tonight. Oh, yeah. Okay. Won't it run? Because, of course, the color pop or your nail that you're working on has a curvature in all directions. Good question. Um, so, won't it run off to the sides? Yeah. The fun part is that those lines are in place and those lines will make the border. My color won't run over that line if you work in the lines. Yeah, but yeah a so good question. So the lines work as a little wall yeah. bordering the design. And of course, it's like filling a glass of water. It can also go a little bit over the edge of the glass of water without breaking the seal yeah. and seeping through. Really good question, Gil. Uh, Gemma is asking, with all the Jessica's Choice products, can you also share a little bit of your talent? Yeah, there's always a little bit of magic in each and every one of those products from me. Like hairs from my brush, it's from my real hair. No. <laughs> 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 well, practice makes perfect, Gemma, and you know, because you are with us for a long time now, and I see the grow in your designs, in your... Yeah, in your everything that you are making. So it's really cool to see. Okay. I'm going to cure this for 30 seconds. And then I'm going to clean my brush because I'm going now from orange to white. Of course, you could do it the other way around, but yeah, let's go a little bit different, and that's me. So that's why I am cleaning my brush in a clear drop of base and top, I love base and top, to go over my design, to protect my design, but also to clean all of my brushes. And what I do is, maybe I've shown it before, I'm going into, yeah, and I'm just dapping the color, the pigments out of my hairs. And what now is really important to do, also when you are done painting, is going to clean your brush, but with a rolling movement. So the hairs of your brush are now really sharp. Even if you're done, leave it like this, put on the cap, protect them, but also wake your brush again. So when you start, do the same, a clean drop of uh, base and top, and do the pumping movement again. Then your hairs are more like, yeah, we're ready to go, we're ready to rock, and then you can paint. Laura Niels, Laurent says that she finds that the most difficult uh, for her is determining the size of the different parts to create a beautiful result. But th that is, I, th I know from experience, that is due to experience. Doing it often and more often, you are able to play with the different sizes. So just continue doing your homework. Yeah, exactly. And Laurence, you are doing great homework. So I really enjoy sealing all of your uh, submissions. Uh, but yeah, it's really practice makes perfect. And I always uh, am looking, um, like when you are arting, you are really go into the bubble and really into that nail. It's really important to um, take a distance. I sometimes forget, and then when I'm finished, I think, oh, it's the composition is really small. And you are making your art for the outside world, so of course. So you mean take a look from a distance? Yeah. 
So, from a distance, yeah. the uh, design looks beautiful. Uh, uh, you need to see, because of course you see when you're doing this, when you're working, mm -hmm. from, yeah, from this, like, like the hands, you're yeah, working like this. But you are making your art for the outside world. So it's really important that when your customer is doing her groceries, the world sees the art that you've made, your signature on that set of beautiful nails, um, the world needs to see. So that's why work big. So in, in years and in time, you will get, um, you will see that you need to be a bit bigger, bolder and bigger. It's better, yeah. There was also a question from Gemma, why you have a little pinching tool on your paper pallet? But Aletha is already saying it's probably to keep the paper of the paper pallet down. Yeah. Is that correct? That is really correct. And um, well, I'm not doing it now, but when I'm working, for instance, like with power gel and I'm mixing something to power gel, uh, through power gel, um, I always get, because it's a little bit a sticky product, uh, my papers come with. So that's yeah. why they stay in place and I can work. Yeah, but you see everything, Gemma. Yeah, yeah Gemma <laughs> sees everything. <laughs> but I already see the little fox coming. Yay! Okay, and this is of course doable with widest white gel polish. You see that this is a little bit more thicker product, but I really love it because it stays in place and it gives me more control. And the, um, well, because it's so high coverage, you only need one layer to get that really bright white. Um, if you would do it with, for instance, Cerisa Sweeties White, it's a little bit more fluid and less pigmented. So I really love the mixture, Jessica's mix, yeah. So, but this, is, this has nothing to do with the blending yet. No, This no, is no, just no. painting your base layer to create, your bl to create more effect and volume with the blending technique. Exactly. Anna Robijn just tuned in as promised. Oh She's nice. doing her own nails while looking at your beautiful art, as always, that you're making. Oh, nice that you are watching, Anna. And I'm looking forward to see your nails, by the way. And Natalia says, foxes, love it, love it, love it, so cute. Well, in Holland, you could also have chosen wolves, because they're very much in the news at the moment. Oh, yeah. But the foxes are cuter. Yeah, and I think a little bit more colorful. I love that, too, yeah. But yeah, we could. The only thing that uh, we need to do as adding colors is the color for the tongue. And that is that little uh, drop of uh, pink cream gel polish. I'm going to add later on onto the white. I need okay. to wait. I'm looking at the comments. Cindy Wallace just tuned in. Hello, sorry I'm late. Well, you're forgiven. You can always see the beginning of the show uh, tomorrow or after the show because we leave it, of course, on Facebook, but also on YouTube. Do you know that we have a channel on YouTube? This is called Magnetic Nail Talk, and it's super easy to find all of the classes of Jessica or our other great magnetic trainers. So it has a super easy search function. Magnetic Nail Talk. Subscribe. Put on your notification and be a fan. Um, I also see, well, still people are in love with little hearts and foxes and uh, everybody is mesmerized. Oh, that's good to hear. So now adding that little, little drop of my tongue, the pink cream. And of course, you can add a new tone of your likings to make that little tongue. So I'm making this tongue and I'm looking at the shape and the um, amount of, um, how do you say it, space I have mm -hmm. to make my tongue maybe a little bit bigger, a little bit more crooked or straight, to really customize this fox. And I see a little tongue going on there. I don't really see a little tongue, but I <laughs> think Plesa does because she <laughs> says, Hi Jessica, you are the best. And um, I have a question of Laurence. Mm -hmm. uh, Jessica, when you decide on a new design, so you want to create a new design, do you first draw this, this on paper? Sometimes I do, and sometimes I even do it like two minutes before my customers get in. It's like I'm, um, I made a bee 
just a vacation time ish uh, with that beautiful uh, uh, shocking pink color. Yeah. And that B I've just uh, drawn with a pencil, like on a sketch on a piece of paper. Uh, right, uh, Michelle came in and I was like, oh, do you like this? <laughs> yeah, so sometimes I sketch and sometimes I, I just work on the nail. It's just how, yeah, whatever comes in my mind, yeah. Oh, it has to be so great to be that creative mm -hmm. and to be a real artist that can just start drawing right there on the spot, being gripped by inspiration and then doing it. Well, and Gemma, she thinks, is this a tongue? Because she was wondering, maybe it's an eye, but I think it's a tongue because it's pink. I will show you the end result once more. Then you see that underneath its little mouth, there's a little funny tongue hanging out. So now maybe you understand it better what I'm going to. All right, of course, uh, when you are curing this, uh, Jessica's mix, so the mixture of uh, Lina Gel White with Cerisa Sweeties um, need of more length of uh, curing time. So that's why when everything is in, I am uh, waiting one and a half minutes. Um, then everything is cured fully and then I'm going to add colors. And now I'm going to add colors with glass polishes. Maybe you don't know glass polishes yet. I really, really, really love them and I cannot live without them. So these are really like uh, more thicker but uh, transparent colors. So I love to make shading with it. But you can do all kinds of art with that. I cannot even make an art nowadays <laughs> without gloss polish. I'm, I'm, a fa I'm just a fan. And we have two collections. And I'm now working with colors from, well, mostly the second collection. But the first one is really, really nice and bright as well. And I work with both collections a lot. Of course, we have beautiful colors and you can mix them together. So you can make your own color. If you mix like a uh, yellow with orange, you get like more an ochre yellow. So it's really cool. And you can um, even mix like um, the gloss polish to uh, line gel white to make it a little bit more softer yellow. So you can mix everything with those products. Love it. Shall I go on? Yeah, just Yap said, uh, has a comment. Hello, everybody. Enjoy this masterclass of Jessica and do your homework. Mm -hmm. Yes, we will. And Natalia finds it super cute and she's in a real autumn mood. Well, here in Holland, autumn has started. Uh, Magda says and agrees with you, she wouldn't live without the glass gel polishes. They are just amazing to have. Yeah, isn't it crazy? Because I remember the time when you came and you told about this new coming product and I was like, okay, really? But why do we need that? Because it's transparent. I want colors. But now, nowadays, I cannot live without. Sometimes I have an inkling for something. Sometimes you do, Papa, and sometimes you do. <laughs> That's why we love you. Okay, so I'm adding, like in the colors of range, adding deeper tones onto it. I'm starting with the yellow, but I think this is a little bit too yellow. So as I said, I'm going to add a little bit of this umber yeah. and mix it to the yellow. And this is completely transparent, so it has yep. no coverage, although it looks like it has coverage when you look at the paper palette. Mm -hmm. And the fun part is when you add this color transparent, you will still see, in this case, the Ava Apricot. And of course, I love the Ava Apricot, but to give it a little bit more swoon, possess, a little bit more color feeling to it, I'm going to add that ochre over this orange. What I do when I work, um, I put on my, um, my lights, my twin light, on two and a half minutes, and, and I'm flash curing. But for you guys, I will, I will work Millie slowly. says she just got the glass gel polish, and she can't understand that she could have been living without them. Exactly. Yes, uh, that was my feeling also when, when we got them in. It's just a, a great product, and it's super easy. We focus on the fact that it's transparent, and you can do a lot of, a lot of things with it, but it is like easier than easy, mm -hmm. because it's transparent. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And it's really, well, of course, if you don't have it, there's always the option to mix with your uh, clear paste on top to the gel polish colors. No worries. But now it's easy. It's, it's ready to go. You can mix. You can even add uh, other colors of glass polish to make your own color. So it's 
easy and let's l make life easy. So that's why I'm so happy with these. Okay, now I'm going to show you my end results and I'm going to point out where I'm going to shade. So over here you see black, but this is all shading in different colors. You see that it yeah. um, goes from black to light. So that's what I'm going to do on the tip of the heads, in the ears, a little bit with his paws, neck and tail. I'm going to add my umber with a tinier brush. <laughs> Gerry says, well, this workshop is already a challenge and this is only the beginning. Yeah, but you can only learn from challenges, Gerry. Okay, now I'm going uh, in with my Detailer 3 and I'm going to pull. And it seems a little bit wet, so did you take a little bit of prep and wipe or is this base on top? This is a little bit of base on top, but a little bit too much, so I'm drying it out. But you use that as a kind of lubrication yes. to blend it from intense color to neutral. Exactly. And I am just uh, working on that sticky layer of the gel polish. Henriette just loves the end result. It's so cute, yeah, it is super cute. And so sharp. So I'm laying down a bulk of color. I am really like cleaning my brush and with that dry brush. And in the beginning there was a little bit of uh, base on top because I wanted to wake my brush, so that's why. Ah. Okay, because I also see sometimes that the trainers use the base on top really to blend the color. Mm -hmm. But you use it just as a medium to open up or uh, get your brush alive. And then you just dry your brush and use the wet gel that's there. Yeah, now I have a sticky layer. So that sticky layer helps me to work on, uh, to blend that color e more easy. When my sticky layer is gone, for instance, this white has no sticky layer. Yeah. Then I need the base and top to blend it more soft. Ah, that's good to know. So on a buffed surface, you would also use a little bit of uh, base and top. Yeah, it works more easy for you. Yeah. And Gemma is asking whether or not this uh, making this fox is part of the homework. Well, if you want to, of course you can. But the homework is, and Pijndels uh, will tell and share everything later on in the show, of course, um, is to make a fall design. So you are free to choose whatever you like. Of course, I would love to see plenty m of foxes going on, but of course you can do like, um, yeah, leaves or whatever is um, like, yeah. Swirls, yeah. Uh, ornaments. Cool. Yeah, uh, whatever, yeah. But I really love the technique, uh, the blending technique. So the color range. That is the homework. Well, part of it. Okay. I'm going on with the dark, darker color. And again, I am going to do that with a tinier brush to make it a little bit more easy for me. And I am making the same shape, sorry, but a little bit more tinier. Is it good to see over yeah, there? It's, it's, it's great. Because you actually built darkness. Yeah. So you go from light, a little bit darker, a little bit darker, so it's all next to each other and you pull it over it and that's actually what the blending is. Blending is nothing more than pulling one color over or into another color. Yeah, and you really need those colors, all of the colors. If you would start like, for instance, now with the brown and then um, black, it mm -hmm. is a little bit less lively. And that is my... Even when you do it? Yeah, yeah. Because later I'm going after this color with Burgundy. Yes. And that gives really life to, uh, yeah, to the Well, fox. in the past, we also made shadows, and I don't know if you remember, but mm -hmm. I think you do, by taking black and then mixing it with a red tone, for yeah. instance, to yeah. get it off black. Yeah. And that is comparable to what we are doing here. You're creating the whole blend of, of harmony of colors, uh, keeping it warm because black in itself can make it actually quite cool and perhaps a little bit flat. 
and by taking the buffering of the several colors, it actually becomes very, very soft and elegant yeah. and alive. Yeah, that's true. That's true. And even outlines sometimes I mix because black, I love black, but black is then too harsh. Uh, so that's one uh, I mix, like for instance, uh, for a leaf, not black outlines, but um, mix it with a little bit of green to make it dark green, like black with a hint of uh, green. Yeah, I use that a lot. Yeah, but it's the same. Okay, now I'm going to my burgundy. And the amount of product is also getting smaller. Yeah. And my movements are also uh, getting smaller because I now really want to stay and push the color a little bit back. Yeah, it's also like that when you go to the darker color, it becomes more centralized. Yeah. So it becomes smaller, the area, and it becomes more more compact, as it were. Mm -hmm. And that also gives you the, the feeling of a shape or a line or an, 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 a paw in this case. Exactly. And pulling again. And that's why I really love to blend colors over sticky layers. I have to push. try that. Okay, let's cure. So the final color was, um, of course, the burgundy, but now I'm adding a little bit of black. I love black, and we need black, because black will um, give your colors even more like uh, vibrance to it. So I always stop or mixing black, as Pepijn already explained, with a little bit of burgundy, and that's my end color. But in this case, I really like, um, I kind of like a badass foxy, so that's why I end with black. That I'm going to do with pure liner gel. And because we have that sticky layer underneath, you can play and pull the black over again, as we did with the gloss. But this is a little bit more, rough, a little bit more, um, yeah, how do you say it, Pepijn? Mm, mm. And more paste-like consistency. Yeah, yeah, yeah. thank so you, thank be you. be careful, and you also see that Jessica places it at the very tip of the, 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 the whisker of the, of the fox, so it's really also defining the shape. Yeah. And I see that you use a pressing movement instead yeah. of a pulling movement. Yeah. Really good. And you see already oh. that it really comes to life. Yeah, you cool. need that little bit of black. A little goes a long way, as we can see here. And this is such a beautiful product. Even with liner gel, I cannot live. So I'm going to go the other way. And I, I will make a mistake. I will make a mistake for you. Oh, why? Yeah, because I, then I can let everybody see how you... So this is too wide. This is too um, more out. Yeah. So when you clean your brush, you can, instead of pulling, push it again. Oh, yeah, because it's gel, of course. Yeah, and this is really nice. And even if you think mm, there's a little bit of smudge, you can add a little bit of base on top into your hairs to remove really that blackness. Of course, you should not cure before you do this. No, no, really good, really good. Okay, so let's cure. And then I will add just a little bit for you to see in the little tongue. Also shadows in the tongue? Yeah, also shadows with mm. the tongue. So now it's just the tongue, if anybody can recognize or an the eye. pink. <laughs> or, or a nose. <laughs> or a nose, yeah. But adding just a little bit of that beautiful burgundy. Because that's toned to fit to the pink. Exactly. Following, and I'm doing just the same. Going with my bigger brush, dry bigger brush, and I'm going to flatten it. Nadja Moong from Denmark says, wow, with every step I think, oh, now it's amazing. And then you add a new shade, and wow, better and better and perfect. And Harriette agrees with you. Shadows uh, make everything more alive. Mm -hmm. Love a shadowing. It's so satisfying. Yeah, I, I remember from the past. It's super satisfying. And it really sets apart 
an okay nail art from an amazing nail art. And of course, you can add a little bit of black all uh, again, as we did over here. And all of the other parts. Um, yeah, okay. The only thing what I'm going to show you, and maybe this ear is better to let them see, mm -hmm. because the inside of the ear, I'm going to shade... Darker. With black, just pure black. Pure shadow, because really it's deep. Mm -hmm. And what I now do is maybe interesting. So normally I'm doing this, like rolling it yeah. to the point, but now I'm really flattening my brush to give it a little bit more whiteness. Yeah. So now I can pull more wider, a wider blend. And I'm now just blending. Yeah, I see what you're doing. The end yeah, so you're constantly ear. playing with the size of, of the shape of the tip of the hair, the, 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 the wetness of the hair, and the uh, amount of product and the transparency of the product. Exactly. And that is something you really, really, really need to train. Um, but that's what we are doing now. So, yeah. Yeah, and Laurent says, like this fox is born down from your pencil. And it's amazing to watch. It's really enjoyable to watch. It's like watching Bob Ross explaining how to do amazing things with just a stroke of a brush. Like this, chuk chuk, it's the Mount Everest. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I love it. When Bob's Ro Bob Ross is on <laughs> a TV, I will get really quiet. <laughs> it's really funny because I really are yeah, amazed by that. I love that. I love his art and I love how he sees and plays and does like things and it's a tree. Ooh, a happy tree. No, I, I love share it. that with you. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's, it's just meditative. Okay. Oh, Oh, that's there fast. we go. Right, that was, uh, <laughs> so you just continue shadowing. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, all of the parts in, uh, um, are the same. The same amount, the same color range. So um, yeah, to speed it up a little bit, I have worked uh, up front at home. So that's why um, my Foxy over here looks a little bit more further uh, done. So what I did after shading every corner, ears, uh, tail, the, the, the paws, I have added one layer of base and top. I love base and top because you are building height uh, with gel polishes and you want um, a, a smooth surface to make lines over. So what I did is base and top, I uh, put it the other way around yeah. to get the gravity uh, swinging. So turn it upside down. Yeah, it, uh, indeed. And cure it, uh, remove the sticky layer, and then I've used, um, like you can use a smooth operator or white buff, uh, white block, uh, to buff your surface, to make it more dull, so your lines will stick, will grab better on the surface, but also to make it s nice and smooth again, to make your lines uh, go easier for you. But, but uh, isn't it uh, risky? Aren't you going to take it too far down? With the buff. Yeah. Yeah, that's why it's really important not to do like... Um, um, help me, Pepijn, uh, like uh, more pressure, like a uh, strike, like a dun yeah. laagje. Yeah, so, so you have to apply a very thin coat of base and top, then a drop. Exactly, yeah. To smooth everything, level everything out. That's why you have to turn it yeah. upside down. And then it covers the whole painted area in an even amount. And then you just use very soft movements with, with the buffer. Yeah. You're not buffing. No, no. You're just making it dull, that's why. Uh, and, and even th the fun part with that, this step in my art is always, I get a really nice and clean, smooth surface and a spot on uh, end result. Millie has a good question. Yeah. Could you also use matte top coat? Of course. If your end result is going to be shiny, do because uh, it's less like removing sticky layer, less steps for you. But if you want a matte surface as the end result, I would not recommend to do this layer with uh, extreme matte. Because then you have two layers of extreme matte, um, like really um, close over each other, and then you will could probably get a grayish tone in your end result. And you don't like that. So that's why I always use the base and top 
um, or the Sokov top gel. Yeah. Okay, well, good question, Mili, because that was really clarifying it. So if you want to have a shiny surface, you, in other words, you just want one coat of extreme matte top gel. Whether it's in between shine and shine, one coat, or when it's between shine, shine and matte. But always one coat of extreme matte to prevent the grayness that appears as a result of the very matte look. Yeah, and maybe um, you had it uh, once eh, in your salon when you will add your uh, last layer of top gel, the extreme matte, like with volume, like a little bit more than Building you would normally. Yeah, yeah. Then you will see that grayish, what I mean, also. So it's really important to do a nice and thin, and of course, uh, shake it before use. Yeah, that's really important too. Shall I go on, Pepine, or is there something you need to tell? Or well, it, um, of course, I always want to tell <laughs> things. I can go to the homework just in between for all of you guys, but Jessica already discussed this a little bit. Here's the homework assignment. Make a screenshot. If so, desire three, two, one screenshot. Create a set of two full designs where the blending technique is applied. So the design type is optional, but it has to have an autumn feeling, and you have to use the blending technique. Technique. Then create the rows from part one again, so the rows from the first bootcamp class. Do that again, and this time you add shading and highlighting technique, and that will be more clarified a little bit later. So the same rows as class one, but then adding shading and highlight. So that's three designs, and then the fourth part of the homework is create the alphabet 26 letters on one color pop with cursive or slanted letters. And that means that it has to be handwritten, not capital letters, which are also handwritten, but clear you in your handwriting, cursive or slanted. And that's how you do the alphabet. Well, you have two weeks to do your homework. I lost myself in, in painting my own how, uh, alphabet. And that means that you have until the 9th of October. Upload your homework using the link that you can find in the album on Facebook called Bootcamp Day 2. Very self-explanatory. If anything needs improvement, Jessica will contact you herself and will guide and help you. Do not forget to submit your step-by-step -step photos, but please no more than four photos, because otherwise the whole system crashes and one photo of all of your homework together in a nice composition. Of course, you will receive your e-certificate if you complete everything up to the level that Jessica demands or desires. But we have also three people that have a chance to win an amazing prize. And this week, the prize is the stamping plate, lots of leaves. Well, also, that is quite self-explanatory. <laughs> we like it when our products tell the story. So lots of leaves, really an autumnal stamping plate. Then the box with the 12 gold foils in different shades and in different color effects and three of the most, well, I don't want to say popular, but very fall-like uh, glass gel polishes. And this is probably the red, the brown and the amber. Yeah, the burgundy. burgundy. Yeah, of yeah. course, I should have <laughs> known. Oh, I'm so, I'm, s I'm a real man. <laughs> Sometimes I miss some parts. Anywho, that's the prize that you can win. And of course, we send this straight from the Netherlands up to your doorstep. A little bit later on in the show, we also have the three winners of Deborah's Challenge of two weeks ago and the winner of the 250 euros shopping uh, voucher, that um, a little um, thing that we did in the Netherlands during the uh, open house days or the discount days. Well, in the month of September, is it still September? Yes, it's still September. Yeah, sometimes I forget myself. We're almost at the end of September. So in the month of October, I have other e-works shops for you. Henriette will be here next week on October 2nd with her Henriette's Halloween. On Wednesday the 9th of October, Jessica will come back for the third part of her bootcamp. And Jessica, what is the third part of your bootcamp about? Well, that is a secret, no. Um, I'm going to then make a little bit more like um, bigger elements, like uh, starting different. Also, all the techniques that we are um, we already did, I'm going to um, we'll do those again, but a little bit more difficult. 
So blending colors, fine lines, and then I'm going to shade under, over, and um, uh, creating uh, like elements behind. So that would be really cool too. It's all about uh, flowers and birds then. Flowers and birds. Well, perhaps also butterflies. No, flowers and birds are more your thing. Uh, of course, doing all of these boot camps also helps you to do, for instance, the homework for Henrietta's Halloween uh, class, because then you also need fine lines and blending. And of course, we also have Aletta after um, Jessica, and she's just going to use stamping. So with mm. stamping, it's less about the fine lines that you paint, it's more about the fine lines that you stamp. And in the preparation for this evening, Jessica told me, Pepijn, I think it's very smart that we do an international stamping e-workshop. And I kind of forgot because I made the planning already a couple of months ago. But we already catered to that decision, Ta so that's super cool. <laughs> after Aletta, the month is long. Bianca Freigang is here in the Netherlands for the Train the Trainer program. And I asked Bianca, can you please be my guest in Nils Talk Live International e-workshop? And she's going to focus on autumn designs as well, because the month of October is, of course, the month of autumn. And we will end this month with our last e-workshop, and that is Jessica, for the pièce de résistance, the moment where it all gets together, the, the epiphany that <laughs> just ends the four boot camp episodes of Jessica with throw everything together and get your groove on with Jessica. Yeah, yeah, but not feeling any pressure now, so. <laughs> 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 yeah, really cool nail art, yeah. So looking forward to that one too. And really cool e-works are coming, oh my God. Really amazing and really nice, Pepijn, that there is coming a uh, stamping workshop. Love it. Yeah, and I see that Aletta is watching. So Aletta, you really have to start at the very beginning. Yeah. Before I forget to tell you this. Uh, one more slide before I go to Jessica. That is, of course, we're still in the month of September, even though it feels like October, but it also feels like March. Sometimes all of the dates get a little bit mixed around, but that means that this is the month of fiber gel, the product of the month. You can shop these with a 20% discount at your local distributor, so don't hesitate to contact your local distributor and get to know fiber gel, because I promise you, this is the professional equivalent to love in a jar. Try it, I promise you, you will be instantly hooked. For now, I go back to Jessica because I want to see that fox jump out of the screen. <laughs> she's coming, or it's a he, maybe. No, it's a she, it's a she. Yeah, uh, she's coming. So, uh, above the surface, now ready for some outlines over the outlines that I already made. So you can follow those lines once more and you can even correct them a bit. Maybe you think it's a little bit um, too thin, too big, or the ear need to, be, uh, need to be a little bit smaller. You can make your outlines a little bit bigger over there. So it's really fun to play with those lines. Uh, again, I'm making my outlines because I love the Liner Gel uh, Black Pure in combination with my Jessica's Choice. As I have uh, showed you in the first part, I always fill my brush, roll it to the tip to a sharp point, and then I'm going to... And maybe you see that there's already a line. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I couldn't... Wait, sorry. Oh. I'm going to <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's clear. <laughs> I will be a little bit faster no, next no, no, time, no, Mrs. No. Pop there. Uh, no, it's because Everything for the Queen. No, that's not why. I think, oh, let's start a little bit so the viewers can see more. So that's why I did that. And of course, doing this on the camera is always more complicated than in your own bubble where you can really get into that nail. Mm -hmm. So that makes it even more impressive that you're able to make those lines. Yeah, but you don't know how I'm sitting now. <laughs> well, I, s so I can see yeah, that. Yeah, you do. <laughs> you do. <laughs> yeah. That is true. I'm sitting really awkward to get in my bubble and keeping my hair away of the camera. <laughs> I think your microphone just uh, took a step out of it. It's underneath your... Yes, and I see what's wrong. I'll come oh, to you. But okay, okay. I will, uh, I will move on uh, with my line. Thank you, Pepijn. Something loose? Y yeah, I just clipped the clip. 
Thank you on your clip. for clipping my clip. That's because I sit a really a bit strange. There are some people that find the homework a little bit much. So viel Hausaufgaben, I think that means that it's a lot of homework. But we have to make big steps here. Because we have four classes for the boot camp. So in those four classes we have to make sure that you are able to hand paint like a pro. So, a lot of homework, but with a big result. Yes, yes, exactly. And the homework, like for instance the ABC, that's a lot of work, but it really, really, really helps you. Um, your uh, product control and the movement of your brush and the feeling uh, between the hand and, uh, and your brush is the most important. So that's why. And I know, I'm starting with the eye now, um, adding a drop. And I know that it's really difficult. But in the end, you will love me for it. Yeah, and what I want to add, or what uh, the director of Nail Talk Life is telling me, because mm -hmm. I didn't say that yet, mm -hmm. but for the last boot camp, the fourth boot camp oh, class, that's a good one, yeah. the price is going to be a big price. So in exchange for that much or that big load of homework, the payoff will also be grand. I promise you. So keep doing your homework and be become as uh, fabulous as Jessica and claim your prize in a couple of weeks. Ooh! Now it's a little Chinese doggy. Yeah! <laughs> it little. looks like the Chinese or the Japanese dogs. I forgot their names. But they're so cute. Oh yeah! Now I see it too. The Shiba Inus, Gillian says, but I don't know. Those are really fun. Fun doggies. <laughs> okay, let's cure this one. Uh, Laura, you says, I would like to suggest if it's possible. So, Natis, I don't know what you mean with this, but so difficult to find the replay for Neil Talk. Maybe it's possible left in some album. Well, I think it's easier to find the replay on our YouTube channel, mm -hmm. Magnetic Neil Talk. And there you can go to the playlist, or you just write in where the little search magnifying glass is, Jessica, bootcamp, and then you find all of her bootcamp classes. So I hope that will make it a little bit easier. Finding it in the group can be a little bit complicated because of all the comments. That's why we have the Magnetic YouTube channel. You can also go to the Magnetic Nail Design website, magneticneildesign.com, and there we also have an archive of all of the shows. But because our um, e-commerce uh, uh, colleague is not in the office at the moment because she's, going, uh, she's on a sabbatical of five weeks, uh, it may be a little bit delayed before it's in that archive. So just go to Magnetic Nail Talk or send us a personal message and we will redirect you. Okay. Um, I saw a question to show how I am painting while working and filling my brush and going towards uh, the line. I thought Diana. Yeah. The question of Diana. So let me show you and all the others how I do that. I will go to this, like this. Okay, okay. What I do is fill up, like really fill the hairs up, and then I am rolling to make it sharp again. And then I start painting to make a line. And let's make this line. Is it clear now, Diana? Well, I was answering somebody else about the size of the letters that you need to write. I will um, show later. And, uh, well, later, Jessica, it's already nine o'clock. So time is pressing us a little bit. No, I, and the tips that I have, I will show you. I'm not oh, going to paint it. Okay. Don't worry. <laughs> the only thing I want to add is uh, highlights. So that, I'm going to do with um, the mixture, Jessica's mix, liner gel with Cerisa Sweeties.
I'm filling also this uh, brush again, the same, and I'm sharpening it. And then it's really important to sharpen it. And then I'm adding a little, little highlight. And I'm really pulling paint from the tip of my brush. I'm always starting at one and then I'm pulling it to uh, a smaller end mm -hmm. and over here a smaller end. So I never start where it, I want it really to begin. No, because then it will be a little bit blunt and mm -hmm. this way you really get it very sharp in the corners. Oh, the little cute news. So, it's not really white white, but I've added a little bit of uh, base on top to this uh, white to make it a little bit more soft. Um, and then let's add, uh, let's give the end result, I think. Is that an idea? I'm standing right yeah. for that. I, I'm, <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm excited. Okay, okay, okay. So what I've, uh, I will show you the end result, of course, because this is a screenshot moment. Oh, it's just amazing. Um, what I've done is I've added a little leaf over here. Yeah. And these are the cursive letters. Yeah. Cursive letters. This is what I want you to train your hand to make a little A and a B, as we did in school. Well, and I learned from Rosalie uh, last Sunday that they don't teach that anymore at primary school. Really? Yeah, Are we getting old-fashioned, Pepijn? Yeah, well, I, I am already old-fashioned. <laughs> but let's go to the, to, to the screenshot moment. Okay, okay, Because okay. I think we all need to have this as a, a keepsake for this amazing show this evening. So, let's join. Three, two, one. Screenshot! screenshot. Yeah. Okay, and the beautiful. leaf is the same uh, blending technique. And I've added over my Extrema top uh, drops of a supreme finish. Yeah. And Amazing. again, this was really hard, but it, it, it okay, autumn. What, uh, what was I thinking? Fall was better, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. But also over the extreme mud and uh, with that mixture, um, Sarisa Sweeties, Jessica's, uh, oh no, Lina Gel, mix them together and you will have a shine end result. So I really love to work on top with that mixture uh, too. Of course, just for your inspiration. Butterflies, but then oh. with leaf wings. Beautiful, Jessica. The same technique. Yeah. Well, uh, I'm at a loss for words, so I need to sing screenshot. Three, two, one. Screenshot. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. And of course, I even have more. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> of course, I have made this fox uh, already once in the show, but I have done it like this. So this is like more modern, like just lines, no shading, and adding just a little bit of extra fun with the um, sunglasses or the glasses over it. Of course, you can do it like this and like with the colors of choice too. Not for your homework, but yeah, you can play and not blend. You can make uh, that design. Uh, whatever you like. Okay, so the ABC was something really difficult, and I know that you may be uh, thinking it's really, really a lot of work, and why, but well, you are here to learn, and I really want uh, to train your hand and help you train your hand and help you evolve your hand painting skills. So that's why maybe it's a little bit much, but you know, back in the days when I started training with Pepijn, I thought the same of his homework. It was a lot but I'm thanking it now uh, each and every day <laughs> because of all of that work, my hand started to do what I wanted it to do. So I will show you my first ABC ever made uh, with Pepijn Burel Academy long time ago, like with a tongue out of my mouth on a tip that we don't have <laughs> anymore. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, this was so, so, so difficult. But I did it, and I am still am really, really, really proud yeah, of it. It is a great, great alphabet. <laughs> yeah. So, and these are the and alphabets. And then it went to the next level. Yeah, but it's really like train yourself. And you don't have to do the whole ABC, but try to make just love on a nail or fall or autumn like I uh, did. You know how it actually started, eh, the alphabet? 
Uh, yeah, but do tell because I don't. Because know I was at a there. hand painting class yeah. somewhere, and my husband was with me, and uh, some other people were with me, and I really didn't get it in my fingers. And I tried to buy a different brush, I tried to try to buy different paints, did everything, and at a certain moment I thought to myself, you know what? I'm going to just write a love letter to my husband um, on a tip because I need to do something. And then I discovered by trying to write in my handwriting on the tip, the love letter, I actually started to move the tip and the tip of the brush so that it was touching and moving in the correct uh, uh, direction because an A goes like this, a B goes like this, an E. So, and that really helped me to practice my, uh, my brush technique. And then I implemented it in my classes, and it worked. The first time I thought, well, hmm, but then I saw the students, and it really worked. So it was an exercise out of love for nail art. So before we go to the next thing, or do you want to show something? Yeah. I see that you want to show something. Yeah, because maybe um, to see what I mean with cursive letters, you don't understand because of the translation or whatever, this is uh, what I mean about or we mean uh, with the ABC in cursive letters. So how we did or not did in school. So this is like loose. You don't have to write like the A uh, next to the B. You don't have to do that. It's more difficult. Just leave spaces in between. And really uh, a tip from me to you is make lines first on your tip. Um, like buff your surface, make lines, like uh, five lines. And then you know where your A, B, C, D, E, F are going to be. So it's more, uh, and you can also make first the A with a pencil and then go over. So A, B, C first with a pencil and then go over with the liner gel or your product of choice. Well, I know we have a second design, but uh, just a little bumper in between. Let's go to our last commercial. The last collection we uh, launched, is it Love or Desire by Magnetic Nail Design and of course Gillian. And I heard from Gillian just now in my ear that I have to be a little bit more quiet because we want to show you the second design. So I give the floor to Jessica and I'm going to have a cup of coffee. <laughs> Cheers, mate. <laughs> okay, let's start with the second design. Of course, the outlines um, from that beautiful rose, as I say so myself. Um, so this is the thing that we did three weeks ago. We, this is not the thing. This <laughs> is the beautiful rose that you showed us three weeks ago. Yeah. Exactly. I cannot really be silent, eh? No, <laughs> <laughs> but I love you for that. No, really. So these, if you want to see this once more, go to the first part and you will see how I made these uh, lines and the steps of the lines. Um, my lines are cured. My surface is buffed. Um, so what I'm now doing is making first shading mm -hmm. uh, on the inside of my leaves. And I will show you when I add just a little bit of black. Pure black? Pure black, liner gel black. Of course you can do this with a mixture of base and top. Now I'm adding a little bit of base and top into my brush mm -hmm. to make my blend. Yeah, because you're now working on a buffed surface. Exactly. And I'm now pulling and like flattening my brush. I'm removing. I'm making my brush dry and now focusing on that line that we see and pulling that towards the end of my brush and now it gets really soft. So again, this I'm going to do on every center part 
of my brush, uh, my leaf, every petal. Yeah, and then you already have an absolutely stunning design. Because then it's like a tattoo. Yeah. In yeah. black and white. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I'm going to do it once more. Um, so always in the middle. All the way around. And I'm really flattening uh, and working with the belly, the tip and the belly of my brush. And really a zigzagging motion. Mm -hmm. uh, now removing and this line, I want this line gone. So that's why adding just a little bit of base on top to make it more soft. Natalia is asking whether or not it's possible to use black color concentrate for the shadow. Ooh. In combination, um, of course, always with uh, base and top, yeah. Um, but you don't get like really dark to dark gray to light gray, like this. It's, mm -hmm. it's faster to work um, this way, but it is possible. Of course, you can make your um, shading with uh, a mixture of um, liner gel black with base and top or uh, black is black gel polish. Uh, and base on top, but I really love the the structure of my liner gel, the mm -hmm, the mm -hmm. the, uh, the, the control that I have. like uh, consistency. Yeah, the consistency uh, to make like really dark shading. And Gemma is getting ahead of herself, but she wonders: is this design just going to be in black and white? Yeah. Oh well, good for you. Uh, you 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 felt it. <laughs> The fun part, and I love liner gel, is that it stays in place wherever I put it. So I can work on and on and on. Um, I can make all of my shading at once because it stays in place where I've put it. If you have worked with really a tiny amount of um, base and top in your brush. I'm going to add some necklaces underneath. Thin lines, as we have trained. And we are going to train even more now. Hold your breath mm -hmm. and breathe. Super thin lines. Really find your support and like let them start under the leaf and let them more playful like this one a little bit longer, but it stops like this. And maybe you can add one or two like little black pearls. This is really your trademark, huh? Yeah. One of your trademarks, yeah. one of the many trademarks. I really love this. So moving a bit forward, of course, uh, a flower is beautiful because of the shading going on, but also the highlighting. So I have done the line highlighting already with the fox. Now I'm going to show you the same technique as I did with the black, but now with liner gel white to blend that, to fade it out over that black. And Henriette says in the comments, and some pingle pangeltjes. Yeah. She doesn't know how to spell it, but, <laughs> but yeah, you're right. The pingle pangeltjes. Yeah, I call them pingle pangeltjes. Yeah, it's a Dutch word. It's not even a Dutch word, but uh, <laughs> yeah, that is something um, I call these necklaces. It's Jessica pingle slang. Yeah. <laughs> so, my brush is clean. Detailer 3. I'm taking a little amount of my, oh, sorry, um, liner gel white, and I'm going to... So on the opposite side. Yeah. So cleaning my brush, drying it. I will put it the other way around for you so I can really show you better. And first bringing with the tip of my brush where I want my highlight to be. Mm -hmm. Like really following that So edge. you're not putting it just everywhere. No, no, no. And now I'm pulling again my white and my white gets from really like bright white to soft white and to gray to gray oh beautiful one more yeah yeah one yeah. more okay love this this so. gives so much effect it really drop. becomes 3d i'm pulling it 
for you the other way. So first, with the tip of my brush, go in, go towards the edge of the line where you want your highlight to be. Then remove excessive product from your brush, make it dry, and then pull. And blend it soft. AG says, wow, so beautiful, Jessica. Henriette says, just look at that, such an awful effect, love it. Echt wowie, says Gemma, or really wowie. Thank you. And uh, Lo uh, Laurence is asking, you don't cure on the way black to white? Yes, in between black and white, the nail was cured. Yeah, yeah. I cured it like 30 seconds, and then you can, uh, because it's really thin, uh, at the end, so you can go over, of course, if you want to be really, really sure, wait uh, until everything is blackened out, cure for one and a half minutes, and then go over uh, with the white as I did, like this. And Jose is asking if you can also do this, for instance, with red and white, or with a different color. Yeah, 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 but it's more dramatic like this, but of course, yeah. It can. Yeah. Yeah, Gerry says also, I find the rose more beautiful this way than in Technicolor. And Millie says, it's amazing. It looks easy, but it's probably not, says Gemma. I uh, love it. Monica says, so beautiful. Whoa, whoa, says Sandra. Yeah, this is really, but this is really one of your trademark styles of designs. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah, the, the tattoo art. I love it. I really love it. I love it as an artwork on a body, but I also love it as an artwork uh, on a nail art design. So yeah, really cool. A good technical question of Simone. Uh, uh, Jessica, if you begin with dividing the white, yeah, so you have the little spot to the sides, uh, do you twist, turn your brush to maintain a pointed tip to the brush, or do you hold it F uh, still, so that it kind of waves also, so that it fans out a little bit more. It fans out a little bit more, yeah, yeah. It's not a point. I put it a point, then I'm pressing, and then it gets a little bit more wider, but my tip is still pointy, but the rest is more white, and then I wave around, yeah. So then my uh, tip will get wider also, yeah. Okay, good question. Thank you, Simona. A really good question. Yeah. yeah. So it's really for me also to think, what am I doing? <laughs> yeah, but it whites around like a fan. Yeah, yeah. So I have an end result for you. I will keep that end result for a moment. Okay, perfect. Please. Um, because we, of course, have the winners of two weeks ago. That was Deborah's challenge, and all of a sudden we're right on schedule. Deborah's homework assignment was <laughs> create a set of three nails inspired by the designs made by Deborah, of course, with a touch of love or desire. Color pops are allowed. And we have three winners. And of course, you already received your e-certificates. Jessica was very busy with that. And she then communicates also with Deborah about that. But the general feedback is thank you all for participating in the e-workshops. I've seen many great designs and great variations of products. Thank you from Deborah. And she has chosen three winners. The first winner gets the following feedback. Does I always have to check whether it's on the correct, uh, never mind. <laughs> what a great and wonderful set. I love the combination of products. This set is very elegant and stylish. Great work. Well done. Congratulations, Tessa Lagerwey. Congratulations with your beautiful design. And I see little hearts at the cuticle. It is love and desire all in one. Congratulations from the Netherlands, Tessa Lagerwey. The second winner is from France. I really loved the combination, combining of products. You use many variations in your designs. Absolutely great. Well done. Congratulations, Laurence de la Lande. Congratulations with your beautiful, beautiful designs as well. And I'd love to pronounce your name, Laurence de la Lande. Well, are we going to meet during the VIP event in Chartres? Ooh. Perhaps. We'll see about that. And the last winner is, I believe, from Denmark. What a lovely combination in ombre designs. You really nailed it. Also very use, usable for upcoming winter season. Perfect and well done. Congratulations, Sanne Kiergaard. Sanne, congratulations. 
Oh, super well done. Congratulations to all three of you, everybody that, that did their homework. We thank you for taking the time, not only to show us that you like what, what we are showing you, but also to be inspired by all of your efforts. Thank you. Your prizes will be sent to you later this week. And this is your prize, the whole collection, or is it love or desire? And let me tell you, when this collection arrives in your nail salons, for all of your clients, the choice is, is it love or desire? But both are everlasting. Thank you and congratulations. Um, I have one more winner, but I'll do that before or after uh, Jessica has shown her end results of this amazing, fabulous flower. Okay, okay, yeah, I have an end result for you. So let's go have a look. Because when everything is cured fully and completely, like one and a half hours, I've added one layer of extreme matte top because I'm tea matte, and then this is your end result. Oh, yeah, amazing. It's one and a half minutes. Oh, I, s <laughs> I say it once more, <laughs> yeah. That's a blooper from yeah, my last yeah, yeah. season. But, but, but I, I yeah. understand, it's just a show of <laughs> one and a half hours, yeah. but it's amazing. I want to do a screenshot. Please, Gillian, prepare yourself, turn down the volume. Three. This is, of course, magnetic nail design. That's who we are. Three, two, one. Screenshot. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> and it's just a natural tip. Yeah. It's yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. You don't need anything more. No. This no. would also be absolutely amazing on blush. I know. Yeah, yeah. And even if you're working with blush and then magenta is your black your black and then white. Oh, that is amazing! Yeah, yeah that's yeah, cool. Yeah. That's a super good idea. Okay, okay. do you have to show? Uh, do you have more to show us? Um, well, maybe the rose from last week, of course. Then you s really see that it is the same one. Um, maybe like this. So, um, but yeah, with different colors, you can have a whole different end result. So I will uh, focus out a little bit, if that's okay with yeah, you. Yeah, or these two together. No, no, I can like. just. Give it a little, and I go the wrong way, of course. Of course. Uh, it is not as difficult as driving, but <laughs> it feels <laughs> as difficult. <laughs> Here we go. Well, are you ready? Three, two, one. Screenshot. Screenshot. Perfect. All right. Yeah. Well, I just want to say this was rad. This was but that's because you're here. <laughs> Because I would yeah. say, oh, c'est superbe, <laughs> but this is really rad. <laughs> it's really badass, kick ass, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I really love it. Um, I hope that you uh, fall in love uh, as well and uh, really want to train your hands and uh, evolve your skills even more. So I'm really looking forward to all of your submissions at the homework. Um, come give me uh, a lot of laughter and fun because I really, really, really enjoy um, looking at each and every one of all of your submissions. Thank you all for watching and um, I hope to see you um, again in a few weeks. Thank you Pepijn of course and thank you Gillian. Have a great uh, evening everyone and I will see you soon again. Okay, but these were not the last words of Jessica because I still have to tell you a little bit and then we go to her kiss at the end. Okay, the so kiss at the end. In Holland we had the discount days that was not last weekend but the weekend before and we had a little um, yeah, a competition about, uh, we asked our Dutch viewers, if you purchase the new products or if you shop during the discount days at us or at one of our distributors, post a photo of your uh, treasure trove and tag us in this to receive or have a chance to receive a 250 euros voucher for magnetic products. And we chose a winner, or actually Linda chose the winner. She's our uh, social media content manager, together with the art department. They had a whole discussion about this. And the winner of this uh, valuable check for 250 euros is this one, Yolanda Nette from the Netherlands, because it was a Dutch promotion. You will receive the 250 euros worth gift voucher. Congratulations with your beautiful composition of our product. We really appreciate this and we really appreciate it, everybody that tagged us in their submissions. If you want to have a chance to win your own prize, you have to do your homework for Jessica's challenge. Create two sets or a set with two full designs, two autumn designs where the blending technique is applied. Create the rose from the very first bootcamp class 
only add shading and highlighting and create the alphabet 26 letters on one color pop as written letters, slanted letters, so just elegant letters. So this is the homework, you have two weeks to complete this until the 9th of October. Upload using the album called Bootcamp Day 2. If anything needs improvement, Jessica will contact you and don't forget to submit your step-by-step -step photos and your end result and have a chance to win this amazing prize. Three glass gel polishes, a brown, amber and a burgundy, the stamping plates, lots of leaves and of course the gold foil kit. Thank you for all of your attention for this and now we go back to Jessica for your last uh, <laughs> t give, uh, encourage us to do our homework and prepare ourselves for class three. Okay, okay, okay. So I hope that I really could have inspired you all and I hope to see again uh, a lot of submissions as I told before, but also really try and uh, work hard and throw those brushes through your salon and will really be a bit mad at me because those are really difficult uh, assignments, but no, I know, I know, I know really for sure, if you really want to learn, you can learn everything you want to learn. So please start uh, doing your homework and having fun with your homework. That's the most important thing. And I'm looking forward to everything. And I'm really looking forward to uh, the next show, of course, um, birds and flowers. Like it does sound a little bit like a tattoo art-ish, doesn't it? So hope to see you then. Thank you for this evening and a big kiss, of course. Mwah. <laughs> And I want to congratulate once more all the winners of this evening. That is Tessa from the Netherlands, Laurence Delalande from France and Sanne from Denmark. Congratulations with winning Deborah's challenge and your prize is on its way to you. If you want to know more about magnetic nail design, if you are interested in becoming a distributor or a trainer for magnetic nail design, if you wonder where your nearest distributor uh, is, don't hesitate to send me an email at info at magneticnaildesign.com or send me a messenger uh, notification and I will do my very best to help you. Thank you for being here this evening. Thank you, Jessica, for inspiring us again. Thank you, Gillian, for doing the technical part. And thank you for watching and doing your homework. I end by saying, see you soon. See you at Nail Talk Live.